Coming up this weekend, it's not a Conor McGregor card, it's an Ode Osborne card. The Jamaican sensation Ode Osborne, hoping that good things come in threes, and he's looking to make it three straight wins, taking on Hawaii's Tyson Nam, a guy who's two and three and is five on in. He's nearly 39 years old. He's a former X1 World Events flyweight champion. Challenge for the belt over with Fight Nights Global. Had a lot of success over with that organization. Fights with Ali Bagwatinov, Jagas Jumagulov, fighters that you know and you love. But coming into this matchup this weekend, obviously all of the momentum rides with the younger fighter. It is O'Day. There were questions around the weight cut from 135 to 125. He loses to Manel Kopp. But he's looked pretty damn good in his last two fights. And if you look at it for both these guys, I mean, if your name is Jerome Rivera, if your name is Zaruk Adeshev, don't watch this fight. They did not have good success against these two guys. Can Jerome Rivera not watch any fight at the UFC level? It just did not go well. It was a mixed bag. It was a weird bucket of muscles. It was a bad bag, not a For mixed Jerome bag. Rivera. But when you do look at this matchup, Matt, I mean, both of these guys can have success with the striking. For Tyson Am, good takedown defense. It's only been tested in the UFC against Kai Kara France. He defended all four of those takedowns, so that's why you see that 100% takedown defense stop. But for Tyson Am, he's going to stalk you. He's going to try and strike with you, and he's going to try and finish you with a right hook. And that's pretty much the Tyson Nam plan. I have a lot to talk about with Tyson Nam in his style, but man, when that right hand lands, it can be good night. The problem is he just doesn't let it go as much anymore at this stage of his career. And I agree 100% with the first thing you brought up. Tyson Nam at almost 39 years of age in the flyweight division is a little bit worrying because I know how excited we both were for him coming over to the UFC. He's got great striking. His technique is very good. But the problem is he reminds me a lot of Douglas Lima by the time he got the Bellator title. Douglas Lima got the title in Bellator at like 34 years of age. He was a little bit older in life, but in MMA experience, he was in that perfect sweet spot. And the problem was when you're fighting a lot of these young up-and-comers who are really good, they're going to give you really tough fights because they have that little added athleticism that you no longer have. And for Tyson Nam, I kind of look at him the same way. Him at 100%, if he had like an Al Horford whole year off with OKC and then showed up with Boston, I think we could see the best version of him. And maybe the time off has really helped Tyson Nam a lot more than it would help other fighters because it was, he is a little bit older in his career. He might need that extra time to kind of recharge his batteries, if you will. But Ode Osborne, for another outside of MMA reference, he reminds me a little bit of Chris Davis or even Joey Gallo. It's like, hey, you do this one thing extremely well, how can we make that one part of your game even more successful? And my big problem with Ode Osborne early on in his career was, hey, I really like his power, but he almost needs that sweet spot of ranges to really find his power shots and really be able to attack with them. But what I really like at Ode Osborne of his last two fights is, he seemed like he's been able to open that Goldilocks range, which is really nice to see because at a certain point, I thought Ode Osborne was much more of a boxer puncher. He'd rely on you closing the distance and really hit you with a good counter shot. But I do think Osborne has made advancements in his game that we've yet to see from Tyson Nam. Now again, Nam hasn't been in the cage in a very long time. His last opponent was one of the best fighters in the world, too. So, for Nam, I do think there are a lot of question marks coming into this matchup, but against Ode Osborne, I do think he can have success on the outside with some of his kicks. The problem is, if he tries to get into boxing range with Osborne, although I do still worry about the Osborne uh, cardio a little bit down at 125, I like Ode Osborne in a lot of factors in this matchup. Matt Schnell just got indirectly, directly called one of the best athletes in the entire world. In the division. I, I said mean, one of the best fighters in the division. That's so not at all what I said. In that fight, uh, which was January 2021, Tyson Nam won the third round. The second round was a swing round for Eric Clone. The other two judges had round one, round two. For Matt Schnell, he gets the win. Matt Schnell won round one, round two. I didn't see a second round for Tyson Nam. But when I do look out at it for Nam in the UFC, he's had four fights. He's 0-2 at flyweight. He's 2-0 at bantamweight. And if you look at it for Nam, he knocked out Jerome Rivera at 135. He got a performance bonus knocking out Zaruk Adeshev at 135. Odi Osborne knocked out Jerome Rivera at 145. Which and he got weird. a performance bonus for knocking out Zaruk Adeshev. So both guys very similar that way. But when I watch Tyson Nam fight, this is my big takeaway. He's like a fundamental shortstop in the 1990s. It's like watching Omar Vizquel winning all those golden gloves. Forget about anything he did outside of the diamond. Just focus on what he did. When you're a kid and you learn how to play shortstop or middle infield, you got to make sure your, your feet are planted shoulder length apart. You're on the balls of those feet. You're down, you're ready for that, and you move your glove. You don't go all willy-nilly. You're keeping the fundamentals. It's all about fundamentals. Tyson Am. 
He keeps his feet just more than shoulder length apart and moves great side to side. Doesn't really cut the cage with foot position. He's very much side to side, side to side, side to side. He doesn't get crossed up. He doesn't get tri tripped up with his movement. He's not a guy that darts in a lot forward or backward, but he really does cut the cage well. Not big on foot position, and he's just waiting to bait that left hand out there, pumping it out there, because he doesn't throw much of a jab, and he throws at a really poor accuracy rate in the UFC. It's just pump, 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 figure out where you're at, and then he throws that right hook. And that's been Tyson Am in the UFC. Now for a guy where they always say, later in your career, that's where power is the last thing to leave you. We don't say that at flyweight very no, often, don't. but that's where Tyson Am is at. And in this matchup, you always worry about Osborne at 125 with the chin. He has been susceptible to getting finished. But when I look at this matchup, this is another camp for O'Day at Syndicate MMA. His fight against CJ Vergara was kind of blasé, I guess. It was just kind of eh, because Vergara had a great third round in that matchup. When I do look at this one, Osborne, again, I like the advancements in the striking with Syndicate. His first camp there for his last fight. We get to see it again over there. And for Osborne, 2 and 1 UFC at Flyweight, 0 and 1 at Bantamweight, 1 and 0 at uh, Featherweight. And 9 of his 11 wins are by finish. So both guys' finishers, you've seen that in the past. The odds in this matchup Osborne open a minus 220 favorite. Minus Surprise. 230 right now. Tyson Am open plus 185, plus 190. We have a look at the topology votes, Matt. Surprise to us there to you. If Osborne's that big of a favorite, I'm going to say over under Osborne 75%. I think it'll be lower, but I think it'll be the favorite. All right, so we have a look at the votes. Topology. Oh, boy. Big favorite. 563 total votes. 87% Osborne. 67% by decision. 25% by knockout for the 13% that have Tyson Am. 39% by decision, 53% by knockout. I think if Tyson Am wins, it's probably going to be by knockout as well. I don't think that's a crazy <laughs> thing to say. Uh, but, I mean, I look at this one. Nam hasn't been in the octagon for over a year and a half. He is, what, a couple months away from being 39. He has been not a step short in the UFC. He's just reliant on his power. And if he's not doing anything from that distance, Ode Osborne is a longer, rangier guy for this division. Has five inches of reach. Has about the same in height. But he utilizes his reach fairly well. The one thing I worry, though, if he's waiting to bait Tyson Nam, we could get a little bit of a boring fight. But he does have that great lead right hook of his own. So I love the matchup, Matt. What's your pick here? I still like Ode Osborne in this fight. Again, Tyson Nam might be the more dynamic fighter on the feet. But again, lost to Matt Schnell's last time out. One of the best fighters in this division, without a doubt. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with saying that. If you guys want to get mad at me in the comments section, go right ahead. But for Nam, I do like his combinations on the feet when he does decide to throw them. But you're right. It feels like everything he does is to set up that right hand against someone like Ode Osborne. Of course, that could land. He could have success against him. But I do think Osborne does have... Ah, just, he has the more... High probability, I guess, to just land that one big power shot. Because for Nam, there is a lot of pitter-patter to try to set traps on the feet. And I do feel like that goes into his accuracy numbers. Because you're right. If you look at Tyson Nam, the technician, you would assume he has a lot more success on the feet than he probably does. I just feel like Nam does try to set up his overall power shots almost a little bit too much. Kind of like Uriah Hall uh, near the end of his career. So, I do like Ode Osborne, especially if you can get Nam up against the cage, too. If you can limit some of that movement of Nam, it's going to make him a much more stationary target than land his own power shots. I could sooner see an early nam finish or Ode osborne taking it a little bit longer nam tends to get behind on the numbers and then he's got to rally himself back in or early knockout so i have Ode osborne in this fight going with the younger fighter in this matchup you can make a great argument for either guy Could and i suggest fight. you do down below in the comment section big fights including one up a weight class of man away between marlon vera and dominic cruz in that main event you're going to want to keep it locked in with fight name picks we always say let's, let's get, get into it, it.